Welcome to Weekend Project with Stone Z56. Today, I would like to show you how to use UAG2 library. UAG2 is a monochrome graphic library for embedded devices. UAG2 supports monochrome OLEDs and LCDs. Let's install UAG2 library first. Open VS Code and hit F1 to start Library Manager. In the search box, type UAG2 and hit Enter. OK, found the search results. The first one, UAG2 by Oliver, is the one we want to install. The current version is 2.28.10. Click Install to install the library. Once the library is installed, move the cursor to VS Code left window and click Examples from Custom Libraries. Scroll down until you see the UAG2 folder. Click the folder and click the full buffer subfolder. From the list, find Print UTF-8. In today's tutorial, I will also show you how to use Chinese characters. Now click Print UTF-8 and open it. After the click, the file will be opened in a new window. In VS Code, this is like setting up a new folder. Find Print UTF-8 on the left and actually open the file. As you can see, the code looks quite long. But there are merely many display controller settings. Alright. Let's go back to the top to see what these codes work. In line 57, it says, Please uncomment one of the construct line below. It tells us to define the display we will use for the project. The display I used for this tutorial is a 0.96 inch OLED display that comes with SD1306 controller and it has a resolution of 128x64 naming rule of the constructor the UAG2 is a constant prefix for every constructor the second section SSD1306 is either display model number or the controller number the next section is definition of the display resolution such as 128x64 pixels. The next no name is a display name. Then the next section is F. It means full buffer. If you probably still remember that we picked up the UAG2 print UTF-8 example, the file was under the directory full buffer. F. Full buffer has more flexibility during coding, but uses more memory. You might see other constructors with one or two, and they are use page buffer. They use less memory than that of full buffer. Be careful, the different coding method of using F, one, and two will be different. In my tutorial, I will use F full buffer with clear buffer function and send buffer function. Since it's more convenient, I will use F for buffer for this tutorial. Next is a hardware I square C or SPI. The display I used is hardware I square C. Let's uncomment the constructor for the tutorial. Uncomment line 67. This constructor fits perfectly for our tutorial. Now scroll down as you can see the predefined constructors. UAG2 supports plenty of monochrome displays. Let's go to line 296. Inside the setup, it uses UAG2.begin function to initialize the UAG2 library. Then in line 297, it uses UAG2 enable UTF8 print function. This allows us to print out non-English characters such as Chinese, Korean, and Japanese, and even many more iconic symbols. In line 301, 
UAG2 set function is to tell UAG2 what fun we will use on the display. In our example, we will use UAG2 font Unifont T Chinese to font style. In GitHub, UAG2 lists all supported fonts. The list was updated 28 days ago. As you can see, UAG2 supports from 3 pixels height to 92 pixel height fonts. So most monochrome display should be supported. I will leave the URL for this font in the description below. Now back to our code. Line 302 set font direction and has a value of 0, 1, 2, 3. The default value is 0 from left to right. In line 303 is UAG2 clear buffer. Between clear buffer and same buffer is what we want to show on the display. In line 304, UAG2 set cursor tells UAG2 to set the starting point on X0 and Y15. X is from the most left point and Y is from the very top point. Let's take a look at the UAG2 reference menu. In this example, it uses a different font and it sets the cursor at 0, 15. X equals 0, Y equals 15 as shown on the menu. One thing to remember is that the height of the characters we choose must fit inside the display. In our example, we used 16 pixel height characters that from 0 to 15. Ok, let's upload a sketch to ESP32S I have here. Upload completed. As you can see, Hello World, both in English and Chinese, are printed on the display. What will happen if you try to print different characters at the same location? Let's print Olympic Games at the same location as Hello World in Chinese, 040. Upload the sketch to ESP32S. Ok, it's done. Let's take a closer look at the characters. Hello World and Olympic Games are overlapping. In other words, newly printed characters do not override previously printed characters. We have to use a spatial function for this purpose. In the code, let's define display row position with a variable, row. Row 1 is at 15, row 2 is 31, row 3 is 47, and row 4 is 63. With this variable, it's easier to understand what row we are printing on the display. I created a function named Olay Overlay Print. It allows you to override any characters without overlapping. When calling this function, just provide the string to be displayed and the row number you want to display. What it does is print a black box at the specified row number and then print the string again to avoid character overlapping. Remember to print the characters between clear buffer function and same buffer function. Now let's use Olay Overlay Print function to rewrite the example code. Ok, the code is modified. As you can see, I purposely overlap the last two rows in this code. After compile and unload, I've completed. Let's take a closer look. See, the last printed Olympic Games is now overwriting the previously printed characters. I will leave this piece of code in my Stone Z56 block and you are welcome to use it. 
Our next step is to use the vast varieties of funds the UAG to provide it. For many basic IoT projects, printing temperature with the weather symbol is a good idea. Let's go to GitHub and find this FNTGRP iconic page. All these icons are open sourced and free to use in our projects. Iconic fonts are named with topics that makes it easier for us to find icons we want to use. Hit Ctrl F to search weather on the page. See, there's a lot of weather to choose from. Let's use weather 2x. Click it to see the details. After clicking the link, we can see there's a small picture with weather 2x details in it. On the top, UAG2 font open iconic weather 2x t tells you the font name. In our code, we have to use set font to specify the font name. Next, we can see the width is 16 and the height is also 16. The next line tells you the location of a particular symbol. The number 0040 is in hexadecimal. The cloud symbol is 0040 and the next one is 0041. 0042, 0043. Let's try to display the cloud symbol on our display. Let's remove set font from our OLAY overlay function to have more flexibility to use different fonts or symbols. In line 318, let's change the font to open iconic weather 2x. In line 319, Olay overlay print, let's use a backslash U and then 0040 to specify the cloud symbol and modify the row number from 2 to 3. Now let's upload the sketch to ESSP32S. Meanwhile, we can take a look at the open iconic font list. As you can see, there are so many symbols that's ready for us to use. Just remember, the height must fit in the display in the project. Look, there are iconic text, iconic things, iconic weather, iconic play, iconic email, and many many more. Okay, the sketch is uploaded. Let's take a look at the display row 3. The cloud is printed and displayed correctly. This is how to use UAG2 open iconic symbol on our project. Now we are going to show different Chinese characters on display. In many IoT projects, temperature, brightness, action level, and humidity in Chinese characters are quite common. Let's try to write these Chinese characters on the display. In line 314, we specified the uniform Chinese, then printed the Chinese and English fonts. Then in line 318, we changed the font to open iconic weather and printed the cloud. Then we are about to print more Chinese characters. So remember to specify the font name again in order to print. This is also why we removed the set font from our Olay overlay print function. Let's upload the sketch to ESP32. Okay, it's uploaded. Let's take a closer look at these Chinese characters. Hmm, only four of eight characters are showing on the Olay display. This is due to the fact that the font we used does not include those missing characters. What should we do? There are many ways to overcome this. First, we can actually make these missing characters ourselves by using UAG2 font tools. Please refer to the URL on how to make UAG2 font tutorials. In a Facebook group named MQTT and IoT Integration Application, Mr. Young has created 5,000 plus most frequently used traditional Chinese characters and integrated it with Chinese font too. It's free for everyone to use. 
the free 5,000 plus traditional Chinese font download URL is also in the description below. Really appreciate Mr. Yang's generosity. Now let's go to 5000 plus Chinese font page and download the UA G2 library. In the file name starting with 52A7 is the list with all character included. Let's download the UA G2 version 2.27.6.zip file and unzip the file inside Arduino library's directory. It is important to unzip the downloaded file into right directory. Misplacing the unzipped file will cause Arduino not able to find the correct library in the future. So remember the directory where you unzip it. Also, remember to remove previously installed UAG2 library to prevent library conflict. After library is placed in the right directory, let's upload the same sketch to ESP32 and test it again. Font Mr. Yang created was named Unifont Chinese 1, not 2. So remember to modify the font name in setFont function. Let's take a look at the traditional Chinese character that all 8 of 8 characters are showing correctly on the display. The new font library worked. This is how to use UAG2 to display UTF-8 characters on display. One reminder of memory usage. When using these 5000 plus Chinese characters, for this tutorial, I tested how much memory will be used for previous UAG2 without 5000 plus fonts and UAG2 with 5000 fonts. As you can see, the first used about 233 kilobytes, and the later used 434 kilobytes. There are 200 plus kilobytes differences. If we are using the memory limited Arduino boards, this could be a concern. However, since we are using an ESP32, we don't need to worry about this memory issue. So I decided to use the default 5000 plus Chinese font as my future IoT project library. Finally, I would like to say thank you to Mr. Yang's effort to let everyone use the free fonts. This is the end of the tutorial. Thanks for watching. If you like this video tutorial, please share, like, and subscribe. I will see you next time.